Greetings in the name of Christ our Lord and good morning. Welcome to this worship service for January 16th, 2022. So good to be with you today. A reminder of our purpose to advance the ways of God on earth and to help people create the lives of deep meaning and wholeness and peace they seek. And we do that in a relationship with God through Christ and through the study and the practice of the values of our faith. A few announcements to make. One is, uh, let's see, uh, a reminder that session meeting, our session meeting for January is coming up. It's on the 25th, always on the fourth Tuesday of the month. Easy to remember because we're Fourth Presbyterian Church and Fourth Tuesday. So at 7 o'clock, uh, please plan on being a part of that if you are an elder and we'll get our year kicked off uh, on a, in a very positive way as we start moving towards 2022, which reminds me also that we have our annual congregational meeting on the 30th of January. We do two things there. We look back on the year just completed, but we also do a little look forward as to kind of what we're going to do in 2022. So please mark your calendar for that plan to come in and be a part of it. If you have a, uh, an ornament that was placed on the Christmas tree that was one of your personal ones, we took those down. We do have them. If you uh, have not picked yours up yet, then when you come in for worship, try to remember to get those. We will have them out for people to grab uh, because what we said at the very beginning of that whole process was we wanted to put our own personal ornaments that mean something to us on the tree, uh, but that didn't, we didn't want those to get packed up and put up in the attic. So anyway, they're here. Come get yours if you uh, haven't picked yours up yet. I think that's all I have for the announcements. Very brief, but I do have a call to worship that comes from Psalm 1. So let's prepare our hearts and our minds to worship God. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all they do, they prosper. Let us worship God. Hey everybody, welcome to Children's Time. I want to tell you a quick story about a boy who gives up some bread. It's a story about Jesus and it's in the Bible. <clears throat> in this story, there's a whole bunch of people kind of on a mountainside and they're listening to Jesus teach and he's telling them stories and he's explaining different things, but it gets kind of late. And as the day goes on, his disciples, Jesus' disciples, come to him and they say, Hey, look, you should send everybody home because they're going to have to go home and get something to eat. And Jesus says, Well, why don't you feed them yourself? And they're like, Well, we don't have anything to give them. Well, as it so happens, there was a boy in the crowd who had some bread. And they went to him, <clears throat> and he was willing to give his loaf of bread to Jesus so that others could then have something to eat incredible incredible he could have saved that loaf of bread for himself he could have taken it and said no this is mine i'm just going to eat it and nobody else gets any but he didn't he gave it to jesus so that everybody could have some that's incredible now what ends up happening is everybody gets something to eat because jesus was able to multiply it it was quite a miracle but everyone got something to eat that day all because this boy was willing to give up his loaf of bread so that others could have something also this is really important for us to remember because sometimes we'll have things that other people need or want and that would be a good time for us to share a good time for us to do what we can to offer what we have just like that little boy did so that everybody can have some not just ourselves that's what it means to be selfless it's what it means to be giving it's what it means to make a sacrifice for other people you give up your stuff so that not only do you get to enjoy it, but everybody gets to enjoy it. I hope you remember that because there are some things that you have, great gifts that you have, talents and skills and abilities that you have that you can give to other people and it'll help them. And so I hope you'll remember to do that. Share the things you have. Sometimes it's food, sometimes it's a listening ear, sometimes it's time, sometimes it's your energy and effort. Whatever it is, offer it so that not only do you get to benefit from it, but everybody gets to benefit from it. I hope you remember that. Have a blessed week and go forth in Christ. We turn now to our scripture reading. But before we do that, as always, let's ask God's 
guidance and direction as we read and listen to what Scripture has to say to us. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we do indeed uh, turn our attention to you and listen for your words to us today as the Scriptures are read. And as they are proclaimed, may we hear your Holy Spirit guiding us and directing us, inspiring us and empowering us to the ways uh, that you call us to be, disciples of Christ. In the name of Christ, we make our prayer. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. It's a very familiar text to you a few weeks ago, and uh, well, actually last week and then two weeks ago. I was reminding you that we, we go through the birth narrative in the Gospel of Luke, and then we make one stop uh, at kind of the age of 12 or 13 when he's back at the temple, and then uh, we are jumping headlong into his baptism, and now we are moving from that baptism, literally uh, the next chapter, into the temptation story in the wilderness. And there uh, the devil, the evil one, will uh, tempt Jesus. I don't know what you think about what the evil one is or the devil is. I'm not a big personifier of that, but I do believe strongly uh, that there are things within us, those voices within us that would appeal uh, to our ego, appeal to our wants and our needs. And that those are things that we sometimes need to resist as this particular text will demonstrate. And hopefully as the sermon will demonstrate. Listen to these words from the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command the, this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. These are words of faith for people of faith. Thanks be to God. I hate to start right out of the gate on a sermon on what seems like kind of a downer note, but... I'm going to. I feel like, and I'm sure there are many Americans who feel this way because this sentiment has been expressed in a variety of ways. I feel like in many ways our country is in such a bad place. It, it's, it isn't simply the coronavirus, though that definitely plays a large role. It, it's more about the attitudes of, of people. It's about the ways that we function in the world. It's the ways that we communicate with each other. It's the ways that uh, I think social media have almost made it um, not only possible, but in some ways um, suggested uh, that we treat each other and talk to each other in ways that are, are mean and hateful. And I just feel like it's tearing apart the fabric of who we are as a nation. I really do. We are uh, torn apart. There is definitely two sides uh, that are running around out there and it just seems to me like that's a shame it shouldn't be that way and to be perfectly honest it's somewhat depressing i think this text has something to say to to all of that i think this text has a lot to say actually about all of that about how we as a nation come together and how that's going to work and i pray and i hope that it can work but i'm skeptical at times too because of what is required 
Let's take our text for today. Look at the appeal that the evil one brings to Jesus. In his mind, there are three appeals. One is to his needs, one is to his wants, and one is to his ego. Let's just start with his needs. He's been out there for 40 days in the wilderness. He is starving. He's hungry. He has a body that needs to be fed. And so the evil one plants in his head, you know what? If you took that stone, you could turn it into bread. You'd have something to eat. It'd be easy. It's an appeal to his needs. He needs food to eat. He needs food and water to survive. It's not a hypothetical. This is what he needs in order to make it. And yet he will not compromise who he is in order to get what he needs. He will not compromise or sacrifice the ways of God in order to get something to eat. In fact, what he is sacrificing is his needs themselves. Those needs are being set aside and he will not compromise his relationship with God and his values in order to get what he needs. This is unheard of, really, and I think this kind of culture. In our culture, we're all about getting our needs met. I want mine. Remember that song from George Harrison, I Me Mine? I think it was George Harrison and not the Beatles, but I Me Mine, I Me Mine. It's about me getting what I want, what I need, what I have to get. It's my rights. It's my desires. It's my hopes. It's my dreams. It's all about I, me, mine. Not we, us, ours, but I, me, mine. The second appeal is to his uh, what? His wants. So we have needs that we have to have met in some way, but we also have wants and desires. And so what the evil one does is make that the next appeal. Bow down to me and all this is yours. You can have it all. You work hard. You deserve that. You've put in your time. You're a good person. You should have all these things and I will give it to you. But again, Jesus will not sacrifice his values, his principles, his relationship with God. Instead, he sacrifices even not only his needs, but his wants. He sets them aside and sacrifices those. It's a self-sacrifice to not pursue that stuff and instead to pursue the ways of God, which is one of the reasons why I read that Psalm 1 text for our call to worship this morning. And finally, the third appeal is to his ego. You know what? <clears throat> Says the evil one, if you will throw yourself down off of that temple, you, the angels will pick you up. You, you don't have anything to fear. You have a special relationship with God. And wow, wouldn't it be cool to show that off, to demonstrate that to everybody? You are a good person. You have a special relationship with God. You can hear the appeal to the ego. And in our world, our culture does this same thing. Everybody's got to take a selfie, and the appeal is to get what you want and what you need, everything for you. I, me, mine. Very difficult to ask people in our culture to lay aside their wants, their needs, their egos, their rights, what they deserve, and what they think is right. And instead, to self-sacrifice and yet that's exactly what Jesus does and that's step one in the way of Christ the way of Christ is self-sacrifice he could go after all those things if he wanted but what he decides is no the values and principles of my faith are really what are going to direct my life and he sacrifices personal gain for the common good brings me to step two it isn't just self-sacrifice right there are a lot of sacrifices that have been made to advance the world in various ways. The natives who lived in this land prior to the Europeans coming sacrificed. But that's not what we're talking about. That's not a way of Christ. That was stolen from them. Their freedoms, their home, their land, their families broken up. Things changed completely. Things stolen from them. Really, the Europeans broke my 11th commandment, which is, as you know, thou shalt not impose your will on another by force, manipulation, exploitation, or deceit. And the Europeans did pretty much all four of those things. There was a lot of sacrifice that was made, sacrifice of lives, certainly sacrifice of freedoms. But it wasn't voluntary. It was taken. And what about black lives in America who were enslaved? 
taken from their homes, brought to a country they didn't even know. Homes taken away, families dismantled, freedoms stolen. And what? To build this country. Much of this country was built on the labor of people who sacrificed, but not because they had an option to, but because they were forced to. So it's not just about self-sacrifice, this way of Christ. It's voluntary self-sacrifice. Jesus doesn't simply say, I'm going to do that because God's making me do that. God, Jesus voluntarily sets aside his personal gain for the sake of the common good. And this is, again, something very difficult to ask people to do in America and to expect them to do it. Even me, even you, even people in the church, it's very difficult to self-sacrifice voluntarily. Which brings me to step Three, the only way to succeed really is in anything, in any endeavor, is to sacrifice other things. You can't do everything. So I take Tom Brady as an example. I hate to because I'm a Colts fan, and Tom Brady for so many years played for the Patriots, and they were our arch nemesis, and yet he has won Super Bowl after Super Bowl, conference championship after conference championship, passing record after passing record. How did he do it? by sacrificing other things. He sacrificed eating donuts and playing video games for the hard work that's required to be the greatest quarterback of all time. And there is really statistically no denying it. He really is the greatest quarterback of all time. Nobody's won that many Super Bowls and nobody's taken that many conference championships. Nobody has set the records that he sets. You, you cannot deny that he is the greatest. But how did he get there? By voluntarily self-sacrificing things that other people aren't willing to. He was willing to sacrifice smaller things for the greater gain that he wanted, which was Super Bowl championships. But, 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 and let's stop here. This still is slightly not the way of Christ. Now, I don't begrudge anybody, I really don't, who is making serious self-sacrifices to advance themselves in the world, to make, you know, major accomplishments. That's a great thing. But I don't think we should confuse that with the way of Christ because those two things aren't really the same. It would be probably a little silly of us to look at Nelson Mandela and see all the self, voluntarily self-sacrifice he made for South Africa and for ending apartheid and compare that to the sacrifices made by Tom Brady to win Super Bowls. Those two things don't really equate and here's the difference. The difference is one is done for the common good and the other is done for personal gain. And so that's step three, voluntary self-sacrifice for the common good. Not for personal gain, for the common good. When people serve in the military, they don't serve necessarily for personal gain. The ultimate sacrifice is given by people, not for their own personal gain, but for the common good. Nelson Mandela didn't give his life and have some of his freedom, 15 years in prison, taken away. His family somewhat dismantled, really. He didn't do all that for personal gain, but for the common good. Jesus sets aside his needs, his wants, his ego, not for personal gain, but for the sake of people for the sake of humanity. We could learn an awful lot from that. In fact, if you look at what Tom Brady did, and again, I'm not begrudging anyone who goes after a dream. I'm, I'm all for that. I just don't like comparing these two things as if that's the way of Christ, because in fact, it's the exact opposite. As Tom Brady moves forward, he is doing so for personal gain. And what happens is he ends up having his needs met, his wants met, his ego stroke. The very things that Jesus gave up as a way of Christ in the temptation in the wilderness are the very things that Tom Brady would gain. Again, I don't begrudge anybody being a success. That's not the issue, but let's not compare these two things. They're not the same. The way of Christ is different. Voluntary self-sacrifice for the common good. That's what it's about. When I think of the heroes on those airplanes at 9-11 who took down the plane before it was able to hit the Pentagon, you go, Oh my gosh, that is voluntary self-sacrifice, certainly not for personal gain, but for the common good. And so how do we live that out for ourselves? 
Well, I got to believe that the best place to start is with ourselves. Where are those areas that you are willing to voluntarily self-sacrifice for the common good? What are the areas in our church where you do that? And I ask myself that same question. Tom, where is it that you voluntarily self-sacrifice for the common good and not for personal gain? Where is it that we do that? I remember reading a book one time, and in the book it had a quote from Ellie Vassell, and it said, I, I want to change, it was something like this, I'm paraphrasing, but I want to change the world. Where will I begin? Let me begin with the nation I know best. No, but that nation is just way too big. Let me, let me begin with the state that I know best. But that state also is just so big. Maybe I'll begin with the city I know best. No, not the city, but the little town. Maybe not the town, maybe, maybe just the house that I know best, the family I know best. Ah, never mind. I'll begin with me. I think if we're gonna move forward and change our world, our nation. We all have to take a really close look at ourselves and be willing to do some things that maybe um, we haven't been willing to do over the last 30, 40 years. Rather than make it all about I, me, mine, we start thinking about we and us and ours. The things that we do not for personal gain, but instead for the common good. In a world and in a nation in particular that pushes so much about how you can be the best you, and I've even said that, you be the best you, what I've always also said is that comes with a part of giving, of serving, of doing for others. It isn't I, me, mine. To find your best life, your most joyous life, is to find a life where you sacrifice, self-sacrifice, voluntarily self-sacrifice, and not for your own personal gain, but for the common good. Let's begin with us. Let's begin, Tom, with me. And we'll begin with this church. How will we make a difference in the world? How will we live, up this, live out this voluntary self-sacrifice for the common good? Let's begin right here. Let's be as hospitable as we can here. Let's invite people in here, even though our wants maybe have to be set aside for that, even though our needs may need to be set aside for that, even though our egos may need to be set aside, even though our rights may need to be set aside. That we as people invite people to be a part and let them enjoy this faith that we enjoy so much, even as we need to sacrifice. And hopefully, hopefully, they too will learn that the way to this great life of Christ, this way of Jesus, is one of voluntary self-sacrifice for the common good. Now that, I think, will change the world. As we leave from this place and as you finish your worship service at home and you go into the world, go, knowing that the way you can make an incredible impact is through the voluntary self-sacrifice for the common good of your wants, your needs, your ego. In the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.